Hello, and welcome back to the Peculiar Place podcast. Today we have a guest. This is Elena. Hello. We became best friends in college, and so today is going to be sort of all of the inside details of our college life, partying, stories that I've never told on here before, and now I have my literal buddy from college that will also share some of our secrets and insights, and you guys also sent us in some really good questions about college and about mental health and stuff like that, so we're definitely going to be getting into that shortly. First, I mean, we usually do trending topics, but because many of you may not know Elena, I know this is kind of like a really general question, but tell us about yourself. (laughs) I hate this because, like, they do this at job interviews. I know. So when you break the ice and you're like, I have no idea who I am. It's a loaded question. Oh, yeah. Um, so my name's Elena, born and raised in the GTA of Ontario. Mm-hmm. Um, I love to garden. I love collecting succulents. I love to travel. I've been around many parts of Europe mm-hmm. and South America and the States. I own a five-year-old French bulldog named Sir Patrick Spuddington, who mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with. We are obsessed with bulldogs. Is he five already? Yes. Oh, my god. Yeah, yeah, I know. He just turned uh, five on January 5th. That's crazy. Winnie's going to be eight. I remember when you got her as a puppy. Yeah. yeah. And, and Thomas like... is three. Yeah, we love we love dogs in general, but... Bulldogs, we like really bonded. I had a bulldog when we were in college named Dozer. Don't get me started. (laughs) We will cry. He's amazing and we just bonded over him. Yeah. Well, I didn't know anything about bulldogs until Until I met. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I never met a bulldog. Yeah. So you're like, come over. It was like first year and then I saw this massive lump. (laughs) And I was like, I love him. He's like a little hippo. A potato. Yeah. Oh, Spuddington. literally. Yeah. That's yeah. That's kind of how I got. You were name. inspired by oh, Dozer. Oh, hundred percent inspired by Dozer. <laughs> I was like, I love you, and I was obsessed with him. Like I'd come over and you'd be like, Go see, go see, and it'd be like him running down the yeah. stairs to see me. He was the best. Bulldogs are the best. They are such personalities, and like. You have to be a bulldog person because so many people are like, oh, their faces are so ugly. Oh, they're I, they're I so flat. Like, how can you like that? But that's just their appeal. I feel like there's two types of people out there. There's the people that are like, they have the worst health. They look oh, so I ugly. Know. And then there's the people who are like, oh, my God, they're so cute. And yeah. it's like, no, we're, we're not hating on dogs. Yeah. OK, you can hate on the <laughs> irresponsible breeders, but the dogs are really cute. You're either a snout person or you're not. Yeah. And, <laughs> and we're, we're clearly not. And we're not snout people. If they're abnormal. <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So what else? So tell us about your work or your... Yeah. So I am a graphic designer. I uh, graduated from Humber College with Jess. Mm -hmm. And ever since we graduated, I've managed to land a job in the industry. And I'm a creative designer right now for Sobeys, which Mm -hmm. is a large grocery chain here in Canada. And I create a lot of really cool digital and print and web designs for... Sobeys across the country and it's specifically Sobeys by Voila so it's grocery delivery and I love it because I work with food every day Mm -hmm. photoshopping pizzas and meals is actually really fun so I love it yeah that's so cool and that's such a big brand as well like everyone in Ontario knows Sobeys oh so that's yeah so cool and I'm kind of jealous because you were able to go into the industry after college and I went a different direction so there's always a part of me that's like I wish I was doing that, you know? You're not missing out because, I mean, you can still brand yourself no problem. I do. Yeah. I use graphic design in some ways, like in merch and, like, my promotions and stuff. But, like, I don't know. It's just crazy how, like, we literally went to school for three years. And then I was like, oh, Oh, YouTube. Bye. Bye. I'm not doing it. (laughs) The grass is not always greener on the other side. Yeah. So there's pros and cons to everything. Oh, a hundred percent. And like, I don't know if I'd be doing anything else. I've always been a lover of being creative and mm-hmm. photography. You're the same. We're very creative yeah. people. And I, I enjoy it. I love my team. Uh, no micromanaging and I get to be as creative as I want. So that's good. Yeah. So are you mostly in office or do you? Um, you It's hybrid. So I'm mainly at home Mm -hmm. with Spuddington. Um, But like the off chance once or twice a week, I am downtown in Toronto. So it's not bad. The office building looks so cool. Like I've seen some of your stories and like it looks so elaborate. If I'm thinking of the right place. Yes. The main office? Yes. The the main main office in Toronto. Yeah. It's nice. I'm not going to specify where it is. Yeah. No, no, no. 
but it's it's cool. It, it's pretty nice. It's three floors. One floor yeah. has like a bunch of like games and an Xbox, and then one section is where I usually work. It's just like a really nice cafeteria with an open concept space, yeah. and then upstairs is more where like HR and higher up is. An Xbox, like people. Okay, so Play it's, on their it's break? there. It's what? there, but nobody plays it. And like, okay. you log in, and it's like, we need a membership. And Vola or Sobeys has not paid for the membership. So there's just yeah. a console sitting there, and I'm like, waiting anybody? to be used. <laughs> yeah, or like, how has no one taken it? Like, yeah. it's just sitting by a couch in the corner of the office, and I'm like, okay, this is, oh yeah, I don't gosh. know why it's there. They just kind of spent money on that. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been friends for, so what, we met in 2012. We're going to get into more details later on. But I'm it's, like thinking about it's it. It's been uh, 10, uh, no, no, 11, 20, 12. September 2012. So 12 years? Yes. Am I doing math right? Yeah, yes. 12 years. I think so, yeah. That's crazy. So it doesn't feel like it. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. Like sometimes I feel like college was such a long time ago, but then also like. It feels like a dream. It's yeah. like that happened. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. Fever dream. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to get into trending topics and then we'll get more into like our college stories and stuff. So here we go. Trending topics of the week. It's funny because most of these are food related yeah. and I didn't even intend them to be, but they just <laughs> <laughs> ended up that way. Okay. So first, everyone knows the candy hearts candy. The situation ship candy. Yes. So yeah. these are candies that come out usually around Valentine's Day and they say different things like love you, miss you, whatever. Like you're weird, cute, you're cute. Be mine. Yeah. But stuff like that. It's faded. So yeah. the brand and I don't know if this is lazy or genius, but in the factory, whenever like one of those uh, little labels gets blurry or it's not printed correctly, they decided to put them into a package called blurry candy heart situationships and it says messages as blurry as your relationships so literally they're putting the candy that didn't do so well in the factory into a new box they packaged it they're advertising it and this sold out because people were like wow so cool like we all have bad relationships Listen, and if you can get the bare minimum from a guy or girl you might as well get the bare minimum from the candy too you know and like yeah that that's genius marketing because they probably had a ton of like this candy and they're left like over they're like how do we sell this do we throw it out no and like somebody like gen z or millennial whoever came up with this you deserve a raise because they probably made the company so much money from candy that was going to be thrown out a hundred percent and yeah. now i bet they're going to do this every single year because yeah it sells out and the quote is the printing on sweethearts isn't always perfect this is our way of embracing those imperfections in a way that taps into pop culture yada yada that's bullshit <laughs> yeah <laughs> they just want to resell <laughs> and i see all the comments saying that and even people are like you know what this is like the most direct message i've received yeah. from any situation ship so yeah yeah i okay. love it good on you <laughs> um next there is a new viral snack and i don't know if this is disgusting or interesting i almost wish we were like uh do you watch the shane dawson podcast i've seen some of ryland's Oh, okay. Vlogs, but I hear some of Shane's stuff. They do like and food off. segments and they okay. actually bring out like what they're talking about. We didn't do that today, but that would have been cool. Vanilla bean ice cream, sea salt, which I'm okay with that part. Yeah, that sounds good. But then they drizzle it in olive, olive oil. oil. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I've I've seen people on TikTok do it and I'm like, okay, I can get behind the sea salt for sure. Sea salt and vanilla. Yeah. But then when you add like cooking oil, like olive oil, yeah. I'm just like, why? Why is that good? And then, like, doesn't the olive oil also, like, solidify on the cold ice cream on top of that? I don't know, but that sounds disgusting. It doesn't sound appealing. But then, like, I've seen mixed, like, messages on TikTok where people are like, this is fantastic. Yeah. And then some people are like, mm -mm, pass. This is horrible. People are trying it and they're like, actually, this is a really, really good snack. So I don't know. But, like, who came up with the idea to be like, let me go into my cooking pantry. Let's get this <laughs> oil, oil. Put it on the, yeah, put it on the ice. Was that, like, a pregnant woman or something? Or maybe it's, like, a delicacy in, like, a different country. Maybe. I don't but know. But then, like, why wouldn't it have been marketed here already? I don't I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah. TikTok has always these weird uh, food combinations. I think there's one that's out right now called the Flying Dutchman, where they're like making burgers without buns. They're just grilling like huge slaps of onion. So they're layering oh, like. Oh, I've seen those. It looks pretty good, but like. I don't like onion. No. No. I just like, I was like, I saw the trend and we just bought the tiniest little onion. So I'm like, there's no way I could do this. But yeah, so your breath would stink after that. A chunky piece of meat. <laughs> with a chunky piece of onion. Mm, oh, like Shrek. Love it. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> There's, I saw one that was like uh, potato jackets. 
What's that? You literally just bake a potato, you cut it in half, and you put baked beans and cheese. And I told Ty, he's like, why is it a jacket, though? Oh, it's just a baked that's, potato. That's a 2024 struggle meal. <laughs> just disguised as something better. That sounds better. good. I was like, we should do it for dinner. He's like, I don't know. Uh, baked beans from a can and then cheese. Unless you want him to, like, rip booty, then oh, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> there are secret, hidden, very small bugs that you can find in pasta. Okay, these are called weevils. Blech. And I found out about this because we had them oh, in our oh, pasta. Lovely. Oh, like, yeah. were you like about to boil it and then like little bugs just popped out? Yes. So oh. the way you find them is when you pour your pasta into your boiling water, they actually float to the top. So all your pasta kind of sinks to the bottom oh. and you'll see these like little sort of blackish brown bugs. Just like float, well, they're little bodies. Yeah, they flo- they're dead. <laughs> They got boiled and they just go right to the top and they're disgusting. And the package was sealed, right? Like we hadn't opened it and put it in the pantry. Like mm. it was sealed. And so I'm like, okay, did we just get like a bad batch? Nope. The entire thing of pasta we got from the store was filled with them. And so I went on Google and I'm like, what are these things? And they're weevils. They're Little an actual weevils. thing. Often found in flour, pasta, and cereal. The eggs are already in the bag in the flour or box of pasta when you buy it. So, like, it, it's already in there at the store. Have you seen it in other things that you have? Mac and cheese. Oh, yeah, I've, I've had that when I lived with Wait, my... Wait, you found them? Yes. When I lived with my dad, I found these little bugs, but, like, they were everywhere. They were, like, even, like, it got to our cutlery section. I'm like, what are these little black bugs? They invade your entire kitchen if you don't get rid of them. It's disgusting. So, Jess, go through your pantry... And no, we're going to have to clean it out because oh, our it out. pantry is a mess. Like, we don't have, like, a Kardashian yeah. Oh, it's like organized. You, you, you throw it in and, like, slam the door and hope for the best. And then hopefully. Well, you've been to my house. Have you oh. looked at my pantry? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have friends when they come over and they're like, can I help you clean it? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Please, girl. I'll do it for free. Like, just let me organize. That's what Mandy said, though. She's like, I will literally just come and do it. Like, just, like, give me dinner she and I'll come and do it. She doesn't want you to suffer any. Oh, my God. There might be more weevils, like, in the back. I'm just, I'm scared. There might be a nest in there. <laughs> okay, it's not like a dirty pantry. It's just disorganized. No, 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 no. It's, she's not dirty, guys. There's it's just, just, like, boxes and bags everywhere. Of food, it's just, they're not. Yeah. There's hiding that's, places. That's not your fault. It's not like you took a little bug and you were like, go. Yeah. Go, go infest the pantry, please. <laughs> go lay eggs. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> we need to clean that. Um, but apparently if you put bay leaves. Oh, I, that I didn't inside know. Inside on the shelves. They don't like bay leaves. They don't oh. like the smell. They don't like them. I don't know why. But um, okay. we might try that first. Just and like then slip we'll clean one it. in and be like. And then overnight go. they can all rush out. Like oh, it's like yeah. a warning. Yeah. They all line up. You open the pantry and they're like, okay, we're ready to leave. Here we're leaving. Yeah. We have our suitcases. <laughs> More food stuff. There are food themed bath bombs <laughs> that mm, people are finding at I the would dollar store. I love to smell like Doritos, people. Doritos, Cheetos, Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms doesn't sound too bad. No. Because they kind of smell nice. Yeah, and the like marshmallows fruity. are amazing, but. Imagine but then it's a like Cheetos bath. Are we gonna have the Tide Pod crowd being like, "Can I eat the Cheeto bath bombs?" Yeah, those weirdos. Oh yeah, they're probably gonna. They would eat like def. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not one of those people. Okay, but like there are people out there that do that. And like as an example, off topic, the Nintendo Switch. Do you have one? Yeah. Do you know that the little SD cards that they come with? You can are- eat them. If you lick them, they have the worst chemical taste, and it's to deter children from like swallowing the SD. I've I've, I've I tasted you it. Gonna, you have. I have. I have. I have. So I was like, I need to know what this. It's disgusting, just so, so you just licked it. I licked it. I licked it. And it and, tastes bad. Oh, it's horrible. No. So I'm like, if I do that, there's got to be people who are gonna look at the Cheeto bath bomb or the Dorito one and be like, yeah, what does this taste like? They apparently don't smell like the food that they um, are, which is probably yeah. better. But yeah, like I don't want a Cheetos bath or a Doritos bath. Have you seen there's a girl on TikTok that had a Stranger Things Demogorgon bath bomb? Yeah, it looked like shit. And it looked like <laughs> literal shit. And she's like, I don't want to get in the bath. It looks like somebody just had diarrhea in the bathtub. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't who, use bath bombs. Who approved that in marketing, first of all? That's disgusting. <laughs> and like, who also approved food related it's a dollar store though yeah so they're probably like who they got a pass like it's fine little it's... kids are gonna buy this yeah they're just waiting for kids to have meltdowns in the aisles to have that pizza bath bomb but yeah kids are cur- curious about taste like when i was a kid i've tried like soap and oh shampoo <laughs> hasn't everyone like they know it smells so good and you're like let me just uh no i i used to try and like i don't know why i did this i used to like take 
shampoo, conditioner, and like um, potions. I would make potions, but yeah. in my parents' sink, and then like I would like turn on the tap, and like all the suds would come out. Yeah, and they would hate it. I've done it, that too. It's it's. So but you didn't fun. try them. No, no. Are you kidding? I did. Oh well. Did that you, might just be a you thing, Jess. Did you ever eat the um, po- Polly Pocket clothes? I wanted to. Yeah, they're so they were they, chewy. Like even when I see pictures to it online, I'm like, that they looked, look juicy. That looked so good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I don't. I don't blame people. Just don't don't swallow your Polly Pocket toys or eat stuff. Oh my that's god! Not don't edible. do any of this. Don't please, please don't. Like yeah. Let's That's why I'm sick because I did. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> the orange peel theory. Mm-hmm. Everyone's talking about this. I don't really understand it. It's supposed to be if your significant other offers to peel an orange for you, they love you. And you can apparently try this out by saying like, hey, I could really use an orange right now. Or like, I'm really craving an orange. And if they don't say like, yeah, I'll get it for you and I'll peel it. They don't love you. Has Ty have has Ty passed the test? I haven't tried it yet. Oh, I feel okay. like I should. I don't really eat oranges. That's so random though. Like who was like, it has to be oranges. That's how you know but that also, you, they like, love you. If you asked me to get you an orange, I think I would feel that you'd be grossed out if I came over and I was like, un- Yeah, you're like, it. hold on, let me use my hands and like I feel like you would just throw it and be like, here. Yeah, because yeah. then my fingers would be all Your over the oil. Your finger oils just like and then if I went further and then I even, I'd be like, here. Well, could and you imagine like, if Ty was like, can I have an orange? And you're like, yeah, so how was your day? Yeah. Like, um, okay, so it, you're just peeling the skin <laughs> off as you're talking to him. That's so weird. And then he's like, oh, she must love me. <laughs> no, like who came up with that? No offense. And I'm like OCD. So like, I don't like people touching yeah. like the food I'm about to eat. So does that mean germaphobes don't love? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyways, weird theory. Let us know if you try it on your significant other and dump them if they don't. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That seems to be the internet's, internet's like solution to everything. It's like I'm having a small bickering fight with my boyfriend. Dump them. I know. Dump them. It's That's always what it is. Or these silly tests. <laughs> Kanye West's new teeth. <laughs> They're whack. You've seen pictures? Oh, yeah. Have you? Why did he do that? Yes. <laughs> like, what made him wake up one day and he was like, you know what? I'm going to get some grills. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So he had metal fixed prostodontics. I'm probably not even saying that right. And it's fixed and permanent. So he can't, like, take them out at night and go to bed. Like, they're in there until a dentist takes them out, right? Like, they're stuck in there. Question. How does he eat nuts with those? Like, does he use the really pointy fang part to be like... like He might, like, he breaks it. Breaks the shell. And then uses his back teeth. (laughs) Like, how does that work? And then, like, when you take pictures, like, is that crap just like reflecting off lights because it's it's huge jess i know it's massive oh my god he could play hockey i just and he'd be I'm, safe yeah he didn't remove all his no, teeth or I, he's I don't got think a nice so. smile so i'm just like why did you hide your smile kanye he looks terrifying but yeah. he does these things and then he like gets over it you know what i mean he goes through like phases <sighs> and like this can't really be a phase um no it says this implant is quite unlike anything that has ever been done before, obviously. A source said the implants are experimental dentistry. So, like, he's the first one to, like, he's do something like this. He's the guinea pig. He is, and he oh, doesn't care. Kanye, don't ruin your smile, please. I I don't know if you're ever going to see this. I doubt it. But you've got a nice smile. Why would you he, add little... He does. Yeah. Now he's like a robot vampire. Oh. I don't know how his wife feels about that. Like, what if she kisses him? She'd feel like the the metal. Does he have a wife now? Yes. A new wife? Bianca Sensori, oh, I, I think. Know. Don't quote me on that. I haven't caught up with that. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a girlfriend. Oh, Is no. she the one who looks like him? Yes. And he, like, I feel like he humiliates her by putting her in these, like, very interesting, non-existent clothes. Like, she'll literally be walking outside and he'll be like, have a pillow in front of you. So she'll be <laughs> naked with just a pillow covering her boobs and everything else. I, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're both just strange together then, I guess. Uh, no comment. It's okay. <laughs> we like strange people. Oh, just yeah. We love everyone. <laughs> okay. And lastly, you and I grew up with the Mean Girls movie, the original one. Yes. Not the new one. I haven't seen the new one. Have you? I tried looking for it online. I don't have Paramount. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't watch it. But I've seen the trailer. Have you? Yes. It's a musical. Why are they hiding that it's a musical and they're not I showing know. the musical in the trailer? Everyone's saying that in the comments. They're like, why are you hiding this? People are pissed. Like, have you seen videos of people in the theater, like, booing it? No. When they start to sing? But then, like, <laughs> on top of it, why recreate a great, iconic masterpiece? Like, the original, like, uh, 
scene or like all the people who originally worked on it, all the staff, it's not really them. It's just Tina Fey. And then there's another actor. The principal. Yes. I, I don't know what But his name everyone is. else is replaced. And it's like, why did we have to recreate it? And what it's was literally the, meaning of that? the same lines. Like I've seen people are leaking like scenes from it in the theater online. Mm-hmm. And like it's the same exact scenes and jokes and everything. Like it's the exact, except for the songs, obviously, but it's the exact lines. What's and it's the point? like, you don't have the OG Aaron Samuels there. Oh it's gosh. like, come on. I don't, I don't know why they had to do that personally. And from Rotten Tomatoes, it seems like the popularity is not that great. It's not doing too good. Yeah. So I know. I don't know if I'll see it. Honestly, probably not now that I've heard. Yeah, I don't know. The I hype like, has just died. Relive those great memories of the original Mean Girls. Yeah, you're fine. Oh, they're so good. Yeah, but the girl who plays Regina, I don't know Renee Ra- oh, Rap. Uh, Rachel McAdams. No, no, the, the new one. Oh, uh, did I yeah. say the original? Renee yeah. Rap or something? Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't know what her name is. I don't know. Yeah. She's getting hate because um, her outfits apparently aren't very um, like new and trending, and they're saying that she's playing a bigger Regina, which is so stupid. That's the part that I don't understand. I understand hating it for being a musical. But because she's not a size zero, people are really going at her. Like, how can she be a bully if she's... It's it's 2024. You could be any size and be a bully. It's not like, oh, she's not a size zero. She can't be a bully. I've had bullies in all shapes and sizes. I'm sorry. It's it's not realistic. Like, just let people be any size. I know. People are ridiculous. don't be a mean girl. You can be any size. Just don't be rude. Yeah, you guys are being the mean girls. Yeah. Probably not you watching. (laughs) Just the people. Everyone else around you. Not you guys. (laughs) We're going to move on to our college days and like i said we have some stories to tell we have some questions from you guys i mean we're definitely not like experts in the field we definitely did not study medicine when we were in school so like i i posted on my instagram like send us some questions and people were like what's the best university in mississippi and i'm like (laughs) oh we can't (laughs) we'll research that right away or like what do i need to go into this major in medical school so what we meant by questions is like more like our experience. General. General yeah. questions, because we're not experts at all. The first one, what made us want to get into graphic design? I think it was pretty standard for you, right? Because you went to an art school before mm-hmm. college, right? Yeah, I went to um, an art school. So we did four years of different kinds of art. And I think my last year, we really focused on graphic design, which mm-hmm. made me want to go into it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I applied to a ton of different graphic design programs all over the place. Did it work out or was... I got into all of them except one. I didn't get into OCAD, but everywhere else I got into. But OCAD, I think, was more for, like, visual arts. Yes. Yeah, it's more hands-on. So I've heard mixed messages about OCAD. Don't come for me. Um, I think it's good that you ended up at Humber. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. It worked out. So I've always loved photography, and I've loved Photoshop. Like, in grade 10, I had a media arts class, and the teacher was literally like, here's Photoshop. Learn it. And it really motivated me. And then when I was with my guidance counselor, she was like, would you consider graphic design? And I was like, I don't know what that is, but sure. And I somehow went down this route and it worked out. Mm -hmm. So I got accepted to Humber. I also applied to Sheridan at York University. Yeah, me too. Um, I was accepted, but I was like, (laughs) I don't know. Something about it just didn't feel warm. Yeah. So when I got the Humber, like letter i was like yeah i'm gonna go to yeah something felt right and i liked the campus like it just i don't know it's like those old buildings did you go to your queue for the testing that they had for graphic design because you had to go in person to do like an english test from what i yes oh my god i don't know it didn't feel like warm to me sorry to anyone that goes to the campus (laughs) yeah Yeah, no, a lot of the auditions I went to, not really auditions, but like, you know, you submit portfolios and tests and stuff. Like, I didn't really enjoy my time. I don't remember a lot of it, but I know it wasn't comfortable. Yeah. Like, one, I went to do, uh, what's it called? Visual arts. And we had to actually, like, sit and, like, do a painting in an hour. And I was like, do I really want to go into this? Mm -mm. Like, this is awful. No. No. But for Humber, what did we do? We brought in a portfolio. Portfolio. I remember that it was very nerve wracking because you know that a lot of students are trying to get into. So you're like, this this has to be the best. But then you look back and you're like, it probably wasn't the best portfolio, but you still got in. I don't even know what I brought. At Neither this point. did I. The thing is, I feel like my portfolio was just visual arts. 
which I'm surprised they let me in without any actual graphic design pages. They saw your creativity and they're like, I yeah, let's, maybe. let's get her in. It was an interesting process, but we both got in. We both got and in. And we both somehow. ended up there. An interesting fact is that there's kind of a dark history of our college that everyone mm-hmm. knew about because basically the first time you go there, teachers tell you about it, word gets around. People said it used to be a um, insane asylum, which is the kind of disrespectful way of describing it. But it was. It, <laughs> it really it's a was. Psychiatric hospital, right? Made in the late 1800s, and there's literally underground tunnels going all under the campus to different rooms and stuff. I even think one of our classrooms in the basement was a morgue. It was a morgue. The teachers told us, yeah, our building specifically for creativity and graphic design, it was the morgue. Yeah. Yeah, which is terrifying. We didn't see any ghosts, I don't think. If you're ever curious about it, it's Humber Lakeshore in Toronto. There's There's actually a lot of history. They even have unmarked graves not yep. far from the school and i believe that was patients that didn't have a file or something they didn't have a name i believe i could be wrong but basically our campus has been around for a long time and it wasn't a school and then one of the buildings in the center of our campus for some reason kept burning down in history oh yeah i forgot it about was that. it was a glass building i don't remember the name of it but it kept getting burned yeah. down and people assumed it was cursed like i know yep. teachers and custodians mentioned that they would hear stuff at night and i'm like oh yeah. Yeah, it was creepy at night. Yeah, 100%. and people go on tours under in yeah. the tunnels. We never got that opportunity. They, they locked it up for students. I don't know why. <laughs> I kind of wanted to go They're down like, there. You paid thousands of dollars for tuition? No. You can't We're see the cutting tunnels. access to this. <laughs> you ain't allowed. But people who go down there, they've heard whistling, they've heard footsteps behind them, which is creepy. There's this one story about a construction worker who was walking down a hallway and he saw a woman further in front of him in mm. a nurse uniform mm-hmm. and he was following her and every time he turned corners, she would disappear and then reappear and then at one point he called her and she turned around and had no face so those are the kinds of stories that we heard which is definitely kind of scary when you're there for three years um and this is why jess and i are introverts because we wouldn't be like yeah let's stay the whole night at the campus we're like let's go lectures are done let's over go leaving. <laughs> wasn't there like a creepy like a staircase that we always found kind of creepy I feel like there was one staircase in our building in the F building. How it do you was, remember the building na- names? I, I have <laughs> I have visual memory. Oh my gosh. Um it was the downstairs one. Yeah, and yeah. it was always creepy and yeah. anyway. stuff probably happened there years ago that we don't know of. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so much info if you go online and you look up Humber Lakeshore, there's so many interesting stories, so it's cool to check it out. History is beautiful, but a woman without a face is not. No. So, yeah. I don't want to see that. I'm so glad we didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> How we met. Um, we had the same bus route, and I think that's really how we started talking a lot right like I know a lot of people in the class were kind of forming groups and you and I were kind of in the same group at lunch so here's the thing whenever I have a really special friendship with somebody I never remember the the exact moment exact moment it kind of just happens naturally it's like when you're meant to be friends or in a relationship it just it happens I know that we had a project together with other people yes where we went to Humber North it was the other campus in Toronto and I don't know how it happened but oh alphabetically our last names are next to each other so maybe we had projects together potentially and it kind of just put us together yeah like I knew it happened quickly because we were like best friends in the first like two months already immediately let me tell you if you were on campus and you saw Jess you saw me you were there or or if you saw me we were attached to the hip (laughs) literally the whole time the entire time yeah it just happened it just happened and yeah we had part of the same bus route so we'd sit together and talk and it just kind of happened from there and we have other memories like we had a pizza pizza there on campus and I would get pizza like every single you day you would get pizza every day and mind you we were broke college students so we'd have like a dollar to our name and it's like literally we would go to the Tim Hortons there and every morning we would get as you would say bagels a bagel a bagel yes and even if we had like a dollar left we're like okay let's just get this bagel to like I would beg my father lives. Yeah. I would like text him I'd be like I really need Tim Hortons can you send me like a dollar? He'd be like, oh my God. For okay. the smile cookie. Yes. Yes. So like every day my dad would basically send me a dollar into my bank account and I would just. <laughs> Here you go, Jess. Survive yeah. somehow. Yeah. But you found out the weird fact about the bagels. Yeah. So we found out back in the day, like we were religiously having bagels every day. We loved it. That's all <laughs> we survived. Coffee, bagels yes. and cookies and pizza. And we found out that the equivalent to one bagel is like three and a half slices of 
bread. Yeah. And we were like, oh my God. It's not good we, for we us. We stopped eating it. We are like, yeah. they're delicious, but not every single yeah. day. Not every day. Yeah. Four times a week. <laughs> no, yeah. Just the norm. And uh, our college had these really big jumbo cookies that I think were $2, not $1. Right. So yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you'd have to like each give a dollar and we'd split it. Sometimes they were disgusting though. Some days you'd pay and they'd be like very oily. And like hard as a rock. Yeah. Or it was very they'd be consistent. like freshly made and that that was the good day. We also had was it jumbo juice or we had some sort of like oh. juice place. Yeah, there booster was a, juice. Booster juice. Yeah. yeah. And it's like you were like, Oh my god, this is so healthy, but half of it was like mainly just sugar. So we were yeah. just on sugar and carbs for the most part in, in college. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like we'd like party sometimes the night before and then we would just fall asleep in either a Tim Hortons or like um in the middle of the calf like before let me tell you people (laughs) would pass out on the tables like while waiting for their lectures and Jess and I were probably one of them a few times and I don't know how we did it but we still got our butts to our lectures it was fun and it got to the point where Jess and I lived in different cities so she would come down with her car Mm -hmm. and we'd carpool because it was on the way down to the campus yeah I think the last two years my dad was like okay I'll let you use my car yeah. The first year we just bus. Yeah, we commuted by public transit. And then I was like, okay, like I don't want to drive all the way to Toronto by myself. I have to tell you something. What? During COVID, everybody was using hand sanitizers. You were the first person to start using them because we yeah. were on the TTC, the Toronto Transit Commission. Yeah. The people that were on there, I literally saw somebody blow their nose and then, and then put it. it on the pole. <laughs> yeah. And Jess was like going to Bath and Body Works and getting every single like scent. She was ahead of the game when oh, it yeah. comes to hand I sanitizer. Love hand sanitizer. Yeah, you'd be like, you would get like the holiday scent oh, ones yeah. and yeah. I'd always yeah. have them. You were you were ahead of the game always. <laughs> but yeah, I would pick you up on the way to school and my dad had this like forbidden CD that we found. <laughs> If kids know what CDs are nowadays, he'd have this like console, and then inside he had like a little, you know, those CD albums or whatever that yeah, you can put all everything his burnt in. CDs. Yeah, and yeah. he'd have these sketchy looking like <laughs> CDs. Would, he had ones that would say like Gavin, like hits yeah. three, and we'd be like, oh, our good one is Gavin hits two that has the good right, ones. Right. It's all early two thousands jams that you wouldn't expect Gavin to like. But he had, he had some really good stuff on there. And we'd be, like, always blasting it in the car. <laughs> It'd be like, move, bitch, get out the way. Yeah. Like, that's so- <laughs> that must have been Gavin, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, we'd roll down the windows. And, like, we probably looked absolutely insane. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because everybody else was listening to, like, Drake, <laughs> Nicki Minaj. And we were, like, listening to, like, 2002, like, hits. Yeah. But rap songs. Uh, yeah, that's definitely not what people expect. Like, just a white girl with her glasses. I know. My little driving. glasses. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, my that. gosh. My Toyota Camry. <laughs> it was it was the best time. Yeah. I remember I told my dad one time, because I was trying to keep it a secret, because I'm like, if I tell him, he might take the CDs out yeah. and, like, get rid of them. Yeah, because that might have been his own, like, little personal secret just it's, for himself. It was definitely his secret. Yeah. So one day I told his him, he's like, pleasure. no, you didn't. And, like, we found them, and that's all we play. Yeah. And he's like, oh, my God. Yeah. And he was so embarrassed, but, like, now I tell him all the time and yeah. we laugh about it. Yeah, but... he's great. Yeah. Great, <laughs> yeah. great choice in music, Evan. Definitely good times. Okay, so I wanted to go through some of the classes that we had. I'm struggling with this because college is a blur. I but can't. we had like typography, package design. First year, it seemed like they were giving us a different array of like package design. Yeah. They wanted to see what we wanted to go into. So there's print, packaging, coding, coding, Web- animation. They yeah. kind of gave us a little bit of everything. Was there one that like just stood out that you just did not like or that maybe you really liked? I, I didn't like coding. Yeah, I, I yeah. I, That's so- a language. New language. Don't know it. I failed coding. Oh. Everyone else passed and I failed and I had to do like a summer course, which I then passed. Yeah. But I failed. I failed it. I couldn't I couldn't wrap my head around how it worked. But then like once it clicked, I was like, oh my God, like how did I not understand this before? It has to click. It's it's a little bit complicated. I I still I try to dabble with it. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. For some people it just clicks. Some people it's like I I don't understand it. So what didn't you like? Did you like package design? I like okay. package design. I, I didn't I, like building them. Okay, that's the thing. I I got into design because I don't enjoy math. And package yeah. design was like you need you need <laughs> to know math. And like there was one assignment that we had where you needed to build a little box for an egg. And we had to mm-hmm. drop these eggs, like, what, 10, 20 feet? The down top the, of the staircase. The top of the staircase to see who survived. And obviously, I don't know about yours, but mine. Mine just, survived. As soon as it dropped, 
It was done. I was like, I hate, I hate packaging. Mine survived. I put like little springs, like you uh, would like. <laughs> but mine was like all around the egg, so my egg was in the middle, and there was just springs all in the inside, and it it survived. Most of them died, so Jess yeah. was. Mine might have been the only one. Oh kidding. yeah, I don't know. I I did not like packaging. There was one class we had though that was interesting. We had a live naked man and I think woman. A woman too. Come in for illustration class and. You would hear people. It had to be completely silent. That's the worst, though. Like, how are you going to put a bunch of young like, college kids in a room and then send silence. in naked people? And then, yeah, the guy just takes off his towel and he's like, spread eagle open. It would have been better if he walked in naked. But the no. fact that he had to, like, take it off. <laughs> and he, it's like these people don't care. Like, the man and woman no. came in and they're like... They have no, they don't give a shit. They have they're, no shame, just which posed. they shouldn't. Like, you I, do you. It's your job. Bodies are beautiful. Yes. But, like, personally, you can't pay me enough to, like, strip down and in front of a class of, like, 30 people. And they're just silently looking at, like, your bulge. And they're like, I gotta, I gotta yeah. sh- shave. Like, and they are au naturel. Like, oh, oh they yeah, yeah. They have not done anything for probably five years beforehand. <laughs> so it is. You know what? That's good. Then you probably don't see much then. It's that's censored. true. But then you've got to draw that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they oh, and they only gave us like a few, like maybe two minutes each side before the like person would have to pose a different way. And the worst was when he was facing you oh. and making eye contact. Yeah, uh, I remember that. That was and people wanted to laugh. You could hear people like trying to hold it and in, and then you're then you're holding it in because everyone else yeah. is like, yeah, and it's like, uh, oh, that's that's a memory I'll probably always remember. It's just a naked person in our class. I don't know what I did with those pages. I don't Uh, know where any of my college stuff is, honestly. You're really good at illustrating. I couldn't illustrate for my life. Like, we had to draw, I think, Aladdin. Or no, the genie from, like, Aladdin. What? In one of the class. Yeah, and I made my genie look like a freaking apple. Remember, he was, like, (laughs) pear-shaped or apple-shaped? I I I don't remember this. My portions. Oh, yeah. My, like... My my proportions Percep- purport- or even perceptions, <laughs> all that I I can't do it. Like the head yeah. will be so tiny. Do you know Hassan Piker? No. Okay, there's like a really popular tr- Twitch streamer who like has really broad shoulders. He's so handsome, by the way, and okay. has a tiny head. And I'm like, if I illustrated a man, no offense, it'd be like <laughs> tiny head, huge body. The proportions were always off with me. You were amazing. At, well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. class was that? Was it just drawing? It was a class where I distinctly remember you were sitting next to me and you have ripped jeans and you would put your like <laughs> pencils. You'd put your pencils through your ripped jeans, and that's that goes to show how much we were like actually paying attention. Yeah, we really did not yeah. care at some yeah. points, but yeah. um, I don't remember that class except for the the nude models. I like typography. That was yeah. fun. That's basically where you're just like playing around with different fonts, building your own. Yeah, I remember our final year, we had a teacher that, like, taught us how to make our own, Mm -hmm. like, typeface. I found that a little bit hard. That was difficult. Yeah, because you literally had to make A to Z and then I think, like, 1 to 10. Yeah. All on your own and somehow put that into a poster. And they all came out really nice, Mm -hmm. but it was challenging. And, like, it's challenging when you have a million other projects like on top of everything. That was tedious. I did, like, a medieval, like, gothic font called Castle. Oh. Original name. Mine was, like, um... What was it? Geometry? It was geometric. Oh, geometric. Oh, I that's, remember yours. That's all I did. It was just geometric for me. I don't know why. I was like triangles. That's probably easier, actually. Triangles <laughs> together and <laughs> call it a day. I did that for everything in the last year. I don't know why. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And we had such personalities for teachers. And it's weird because it's like each teacher's personality just lined up with whatever class it was. Like typography, like wasn't he a little bit more serious? And I just remembered something. What? Yes, we had a typography teacher who I am pretty sure was drunk every time <gasps> he came in. Right. I'm not gonna say his name. Right. I know no, no, his no. name. I know he would come in, and you knew the night before, or even in the morning, you could smell it. He was drunk, but he taught. He actually taught really well, and he was fun. Like I actually liked him, but yeah. I think he was fun because. <laughs> Because, because he, he was, was lit. Yeah, he was a little, well, you got to be a little bit litty for college. Yeah. And then we yeah. had one, like, professor that taught us, like, the techniques of Photoshop and InDesign. Mm-hmm. I know his name, too, not going to say, but he was so Ooh. strict on us. And he, he was, was scary. English. You were paying for, like, your tuition. So the, the campus and, like, the teachers and stuff, they didn't care. They're like, listen, you spend thousands of dollars. If you're not going to pay attention, it's fine. But with him, you went on Facebook, he stopped the whole class. He, he, he would just stand there and stare at you and yeah. be like, are you done? Because you've got some techniques that you got to learn. And I'm like, oh. He called me out once for falling asleep. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's terrifying. Like he didn't care if you paid or not. He wanted you to learn his material. And you know what? I actually learned the most out From of his class. From him. I agree. Yes. I agree. So yes. he's probably retired. Thank you so much for DB for uh, helping us out. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. That went a long way in my career. How do you remember all these names? Oh my I God. just know those two names. I don't remember anyone else. You know, I have some of my like college professors on Facebook, but yeah. You do? Yeah, I have her on Facebook. Oh my God. Yeah. But oh. I don't talk to you her. You were her favorite. No. No. <laughs> She was actually a great teacher. I she liked didn't, her. She taught us Art Deco. I remember that. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, but aside from that, I don't know what else. But I felt bad because, like, I would skip her class the most and she wouldn't care. Yeah. Like, she was oh, the only no. teacher. She was like a mom. She was. She was more like a mom. Then we had a really cool girl who had amazing hair and then she had, like, the Walking Dead tattoos on her body yeah. she was really cool too and oh i don't remember gosh. what she she taught us animation like a little bit of animation and she was she was pretty cool i liked her yeah yeah there were some oh cool teachers this is all coming back yeah to me now. i know this is I, crazy but like last week i've been like trying to remember all of like our college times and now it's, it's yeah it's coming <laughs> as back you talk now. about it yeah it was in the spring right when we'd walk to the car after college there were bugs <laughs> They're called midges. They're like these little bugs. More like bitches. I, I don't I don't know, but they would have like sticky residue on their wings, yeah. I think. And I swear on my life, nobody on the campus would notice, but there'd be swarms on top of us because we were by the lake. Yeah. And Jess and I would just be walking, we're like we're doing this and everyone's just walking by as if no one cares but we had it on our phone on in our hair on our face we'd have a layer on our skin oh yeah by the time we got there they'd be stuck it was disgusting because we had a long walk because i got tired of paying in the parking lot so we'd go and we'd park like in the neighborhood so it was like a 20 minute walk from we couldn't afford to pay (laughs) you paid for your tuition they're like no you also have to pay for For parking parking. on top of that so we were like we found a spot we'd be like all the way in the back (laughs) like far from the campus and be like i hope we didn't get a ticket yeah yeah, those bugs Oh my gosh, they oh, were awful. And then you and I had a an elective together. It was movies. And we had on um, the conspiracy theories together. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> movies. My last essay was on Shrek. What was mine? Uh, on? I don't know. I was like Shrek. <laughs> that's so good. I don't, I don't know. That. Out of all movies, he was a movie fanatic, the professor, and I was like, Shrek. What Shrek is life. I, I did Tuck Everlasting. Really? I like yeah. come on, one of my three. But all you well, do you was, did Shrek, so you're the. I don't. Well, all we did was literally watch movies. That's it. That's all you paid for. Oh, I loved that. Class. Yeah, it was so chill. I loved it. I really did. Wasn't yeah. there some creepy dude in that class? There was a guy. <laughs> that somehow, didn't he stalk you or something? He had a crush on me, um, and he somehow found my personal email in the roster. Oh my god! Yeah. And I was like doing work on my Mac one time for school, and something popped up, and it was him. And I'm like, who is this? And Jess like laughed so hard because one day he was sitting in front of us and he turned around to talk to me and he was talking like a bulldog. He was talking like this. <laughs> and you couldn't stop laughing. And I'm like, what is he doing? Why is he talking like that? And uh, yeah, he was in our movie class and he somehow knew some of the graf- like graphic designers that I worked with afterwards. And they're like, they knew his name. And I was like, oh, so I guess this guy's just well known even outside of the campus. I remember we used to draw the back of people's heads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> okay, off, off, off the camera. <laughs> head. Because <laughs> my- <laughs> there was no neck. It was, li- you would draw little ears and the biggest, <laughs> the biggest like round mass of a, just like. Our lives were like revolved around bulldogs because we also just illustrated people with no necks, just oh my god, cylinder. <laughs> All we would do, ears. we would be doodling constantly instead of working. I like, don't know how we graduated. I don't know either because all we did was draw these ridiculous doodle faces. Maybe I can put some on the screen if they're appropriate. I still have some of the uh, the, the illustrations. Pictures, yeah. yeah, I can send them to you. Partying days. We partied a lot. I mean, it's college, right? So you're going to be partying a lot. Yeah. We would usually decorate my basement. Yeah. And we would have over a bunch of people for Halloween, Christmas parties, a New Year's. Literally every event. Any event. Yeah. We would have a party in my basement. And honestly, it's like blurry, but there's so many like photos on Facebook that I could probably never show. Yeah. We were wild. And I think one time a guy came in a sleeping bag. Gavin had to stand outside with like a notepad and a be like, list. what is your name? Uh, yeah. I, and I think there was one time where he's like, there's two people that came that weren't like you guys didn't know them. Yeah. And I think someone was like 
doing drugs in the basement on a yes. table and my dad had to go down and be so, like, what are you doing? Keep in mind, Jess is like back then. It was an unfinished basement. So yes. Jess would spend the week while doing tasks like decorating. Gar- <laughs> she would like get garbage bags and stuff or like you would get black like for. Um, oh, yeah, it was mainly black. I was going to say for yeah. Halloween parties, but she would deck it out so nice. I'll show a photo that's good that yeah. you can kind of see the basement layout. But yeah, it was just garbage bags and like streamers. <laughs> But I loved it because any time there was like a really good song that would come on, your dad would just pop up. You would oh, see his yeah. head and he'd be like, yeah. He'd just be dancing. Yeah, he loved it. Oh, those were so good. We have so many good partying stories, but right now, like, I can't even think of any to tell. And like, what's appropriate? <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I remember I've said this a couple of times. I've never said it on a podcast, but one time I passed out by Dozer. Oh, and yeah. Mandy's friends were on the other side of the living room and I wake up and they're like wow that girl's been like snoring all night but it was the dog it was dozer and I'm like oh my god I didn't I I'm not I'm not a pig like I, I don't <laughs> snore that bad like dozer dozer had a a thick thick snore oh yeah <laughs> oh my god and yeah we'd always be out in the hot tub oh that yeah that was so fun we'd walk to Matt's house Matt's my other best friend he I have down like, the street I have photos of us in the middle of the street sitting oh, on yeah. the pavement yeah I was like yeah yeah I had a garbage bag with me and I don't know why to throw up <laughs> oh may- oh yeah maybe maybe I don't know I don't know it, w- it was fun though it was fun I I loved it and like I love that your parents were very supportive oh yeah because they were, they were so like cool. if my kids are gonna drink I just want to be there to supervise them yeah. but they were so chill about it and I loved it and everyone loved coming over for that reason it was just a safe space and like you knew everyone that was there it wasn't just yeah. randoms oh, yeah. so it yeah. was always a great time yeah really good memories everyone would be hung over the next day but we'd all we, we were good yeah. yeah didn't we go to Niagara one time for your 21st casino? I think yeah yeah and like we crammed everyone into a one hilton suite <laughs> and like we were getting mad because we're like all trying to get on the wi-fi and it's like you need to pay extra because there's like 10 people on the wi-fi for the one we room. were not supposed to be all in that no, room no 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 yeah there was like 10 of us or something eight of us and like it was like a two-bed room for some reason matt and i always slept next to each other <laughs> we went to um one of the college party towns um it was remember this, it was where everyone goes to party after high school um, I can't remember. I don't know. What there, you're there's the, we about. went. We basically rented. Me? A, yes, it was you, me, Matt, and his friends. It was the place where Matt had to like rip the screen to get in. <gasps> the well, cottage. The cottage. But where was that again? That was wasn't that Wasaga? Wasaga. Yes. Oh my God! We had to break into our own cottage because we accidentally locked, locked ourselves <laughs> out. And I slept with Matt on like a little single bed. That was the most sketchiest cottage. We did a vlog of that day. Uh, yes, actually. I remember that. Yeah. Um, if you guys remember, that was really gross. We paid like a hundred dollars for a little tiny like. You you got what you paid well, for, you know. But okay, to be fair, your bad. exes your ex's friends weren't I don't think supposed to be there, so they were just crammed on like in the living room. Oh on yeah. like a couch. The size yeah. of the cottage was like was small. this room. Like yeah, it was it was, it was tiny. tiny. Yeah. <laughs> the things we did, like we even like we went to that hotel in Toronto for Buffer Festival and we had people sleeping on our floor. <laughs> Somebody came with an air mattress from the States. Yeah. Bob. So just to give you some clarification, I used to be a screenwriter for a true crime uh, YouTuber named his formerly Rob Dyke, now yeah. Rob Gavigan, and his producer or the guy who would help him with like filming, he showed up to Buffer Festival in Toronto and he's like, all right, I have nowhere to go. Can I crash? Rob, yeah, Rob's with Matt Santoro, so I'm just going to crash on your floor. And it was you, me, and your ex on yeah. a king size bed. And I'm like, okay. Like we, in college, we slept in like the weirdest places. Oh my God. Now I was like, adults i'm like uh uh-uh. it's i remember my, bed. my ex had a tantrum that night and yeah. you had to go out in the hallway and you're like what the f-? like relax dude oh my god you got upset that's a whole other yeah story honestly <laughs> not worth the time <laughs> not worth the time at no. all when i met ty i was like oh, thank god, thank god. <laughs> i love ty. my parents say the same thing all the time well i remember in college that you had struggles with them because they're like he needs to attend like Bible study and stuff. <laughs> he needs Jesus. But, yeah, he needs <laughs> Jesus. And you're like, Mom, I don't know what to do. And then things worked out things for the best. Definitely you know? worked out. I hope the everyone's way they... happy. Okay, so life after college. Yeah. I mean, for me, I basically started YouTube like immediately. I think two months before we graduated. Yeah. So I kind of was like, Oh, it's a hobby, like I'll try it out. So it has been like a decade since you've been online. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's that's gonna be crazy. ten years. That doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Um 
Yeah. So you kind of you took off really fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think in two months I was at 100K and I was like, what the hell is this platform? Okay, but to be fair, you had a very popular Tumblr back in the I day did. so you kind of already had like your own uh, yeah you were really good at influencing and like having good analytics online yeah yeah it's not meant way, for everyone yeah so they all kind of followed me over there and yeah. story times were really big back then so oh, I jumped on that in. bandwagon we had so many crazy stories that I was just telling yeah and oh. it just did well so so I mean it's good that you went to college because then you had all these stories, all the stories. yeah like there was one time yeah Back to the Hilton when we celebrated Jess's birthday, we waited outside in a snowstorm to get into a club with <laughs> Matt. And like, did Matt, he get into a fight? I don't know if he got into a fight, but like, he was literally like having to shove himself in front of all us girls so other guys wouldn't yeah. like get on us. Oh no, it was and I got into a fight. Yes, with a guy. yes, yeah. Ty, you're gonna have to take out so many names. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Ty. Yeah, but like a lot of the stories were influenced by things that happened in your past, yeah. i.e., college. Yeah. Now here I am still. On YouTube. It's still going Trying strong. Got a podcast. Different directions with the podcast. Yeah. So this has been my my Your thing. life. My thing. Yeah. And you had you have a different path. Yeah. So down. basically when we went to college, there was a lot of people in the program. And then as each year progressed, it got smaller and smaller. Mm-hmm. And I felt like we were in Survivor or something. I'm like, I know okay, who's so next. Be, yeah, who's <laughs> next? Who's leaving? And then unfortunately it seemed like some people just did not get into the industry and then some people did yep so i was immediately one of the people that got in we had a portfolio show for humber where you showed your portfolio to all these really big companies and agencies and somebody from rogers which is a big telecommunication company that owns a crap ton of like brands in canada she came and she saw my work and she immediately emailed me the next day and was like when can you start? Yeah, I remember that. And I kind of went from like internship to freelancer to full time. And I just got stuck. I I like I got stuck into the creative industry. Yeah, immediately, like before we even graduated. That's so cool how we both kind of jumped into something really quickly. Yeah, because that's hard to do right after college. Most people are looking for like a year. So we were really fortunate. We were really fortunate. And like, to be honest, you already know, like we were attached at the hip. But then because of our life, changing we kind of went our separate ways unfortunately yeah, for a handful of years yeah and I didn't like see anything wrong like I obviously hated it oh yeah but it was like this happens when you're an adult sometimes you don't see people for a few years or things happen and we reconnected and I'm like so glad we did yeah, me yeah too. we found our we found our little career paths our journeys and then once we were settled we We came back. Yeah. I mean, 20s is a hard time. You're finding yourself. You're finding your career. Your life is a crazy whirlwind. Well, think about it. You go into college from being a teenager to a young adult. And then you got to find your own root system. And it's really good to keep sincere, close friends nearby. And sometimes things happen, Yeah, you know. And I didn't blame you at all because I was like, yeah, her career is taking off. And it wasn't graphic design, but that was fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I understood it. Yeah. Yeah. But now we're back. Yeah. We found each other again. We, we and back. We, we strive. We back up in here. Yeah. We back so. up in this beach. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, all good now. But you were at that career for Eight a Eight years. While. Yeah. Yeah. It got to a point where, like, I was with the same job after college and I was too scared to, like, go anywhere else yeah because I was like I don't know anything else out of this your company Mm -hmm. yeah like this was straight out of Humber and then it got to a point where I was like I as a designer you know that you need to grow like you can't sit in one spot or else you'll be stagnant so I looked around and immediately Sobeys was like hey you like you have a great portfolio and I got chosen so yeah. it seems like in this creative industry I've somehow landed these really big jobs That's and amazing now I work with food and I absolutely love it yeah yeah you've been with the huge brands yeah That's so good like not everyone can say that the big corporations are not that well, you know what? If they pay your bills it, at the end of the day, get it, girl. <laughs> like that's all, I, that's all I'm saying. I mean, they're cool name drops, though. You can say you've worked with some. Well, of yeah, people. it's like, yeah. Oh, I worked for Rogers. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Wow. For the longest time, my dad was like, "Don't leave Rogers," because everyone knows Rogers, and I'm like, "There's other companies out there." Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I love it. It's so much healthier. That's it's good. What I can say. So we're gonna get into some of your questions about college. Mm-hmm. First one is, I'm scared it's gonna be just like high school. What if I can't handle that? It's not like high school. Oh, 
it's not like high school not at, at all. all you know what it's great though because it's a fresh start yeah. you don't know anyone everyone's a bunch of different ages mm -hmm. and everyone's way more welcoming and opening to like and mature yeah there's no like i don't i didn't think there was clicks necessarily in the first year you kind of just could meet people yeah. from different electives and become friends and it's definitely not like high school and high school is not the end all be all just know that when you go to college you can like enter clubs and mm -hmm. you can meet a lot of really cool people so i don't think anyone should be afraid of it yeah it's and there's start. different people in different classes so you don't have to feel like you have to make close friendships right away like you can even be independent as much as you want yeah. like you can study by yourself in labs yeah. you can do no one whatever you. no one cares no. people are alone all the time working listen half of the people are hung over and just trying to survive <laughs> and or broke exactly so yeah you won't be judged you're you'll be welcomed yeah. It'll be nice. It's a fresh start. and That's a good way to put it. It is yeah. fresh. I was worried, too, because I had a lot of bullying issues in high school and really yeah. mean people. And, yeah. like, it was so nice to go to college and people you, were nice. Do you remember having to take the picture for your student card? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember I got super tanned and I was like, I part, <laughs> as a millennial, I parted my hair to the side and I was like, yeah, oh I was I was like, new start, new look. I was, yeah. And we had like the Could, TTC pictures, didn't we? Yes. On the cards? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. We had to get the so bus many passes. pictures. Yeah. yeah. Fun times. Do they still do that? I don't Put your photo so. on uh, bus they don't, passes? They, they don't use the little tokens anymore. Remember, we used oh, to have to use really? that. Yeah. Oh it's all gosh. presto now. Wow. Okay. This one's an interesting one. I don't know if you looked this up. Did you look it up? <laughs> I think you looked it up. No. no, no. I, did, I didn't. Well, no, actually, I didn't. Christian, my fiance, he's oh, really he big. He's big into Hogwarts. Oh, okay. Like, he played the game. He read the books. So he knew. I love Harry Potter. Yeah. He loves it. Okay. Without Googling, do you know which school inspired the interior design of Hogwarts? So I don't. So if you know the answer... I do, okay. but you... it wasn't Google. It was him. Okay, I right. believe it was right. Oxford University. If I, I can see that. It's stunning. The uniforms and everything, too. Yeah, right? yeah. And I, yeah, that was apparently the main inspiration. I wasn't aware. I asked him because that's not Google. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he mentioned Oxford. So I assume I could, he could be wrong. He could be lying to my face. Uh, you never yeah, know. Let us know. know if we're wrong. But yeah. I love Harry Potter. That's a great question. What else would you have majored in if you didn't choose graphic design? I would have tried to get into Costco. <laughs> Costco. <laughs> and I don't know what I would have done. Uh, honestly, I've, I've Wait, thought about Wait, Costco? Yeah. I, like heard, the... I heard that they, they have great benefits. <laughs> oh, you wanted to work at Costco? I'm like, is well, there a place okay. called Costco? That's like a... <laughs> No, I was like, I was like, plan B, if this doesn't work out, just Costco. find a place that has really good benefits and pay. I don't know what I would have done. I literally told myself that failure is not an option. So I was like, it's got to be creative. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because if, <laughs> if you're born creative, you know. So I'm like, you, you're going to do something in that field. To answer your question, I I don't know. I would have just been a regular job because okay. I, I only do creative. Yeah. And you do too. Even to this day, it's still creative. Well, yeah, I mean, I did have backups that didn't really make sense. Um, I had psychology, which, like, I, that's way too, I couldn't do that. I also had architecture, but then I realized you had to have physics. Oh, And I was failing no. physics, and I'm hell like, no. I can't do this. Yeah. And then visual arts. Like, I was auditioning you for visual arts. You were born to arts. be creative. Like, even in college, uh, you were making jewelry. Yeah. You're very much an entrepreneur, but you're very creative. Yeah. So you did, like, jewelry making, you ran an art business. It was still going to be something creative. Yeah, that's true. Line. Yeah, that's true. Psychology. Like, Dr. Jess. Psychology? What? Dr. Jesse V. No, 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 no. no, no. no that doesn't, it doesn't ring. No, it wasn't <laughs> meant to be. I'm super worried about going to college because of the debt I'll be in. Is it worth it? You don't have to go to college. Like nowadays, you don't have to. I mean, if you if that's your passion and you really, really want to, then it'll be worth the debt, right? If you feel that it is. Yes, it is. It, this is not a one answer fits all. It exactly. depends on your degree, too. Like, if this is medical or something significant, then like being to. a lawyer, yeah, abs absolutely. To be honest, I feel like with our schooling, was it worth it? Not necessarily. Did it help us network and get into places and yeah. have apprenticeships and teach us stuff? Yeah, I think it did. Mm -hmm. So it's really up to you if you think the debt is worth taking on. Yeah, it's expensive. It's very expensive. It really is. Yeah. I was fortunate enough where my family made savings for my education, so I left debt free. But that's not the case for everyone. Everyone yeah. has a different story. Right. Right. But it's important to know that, like, you don't have to go to university. It's or not college. the end all be it's, all. It's yeah. not. Like, I know Ty's dad never went, and he's the yeah. top of his company yeah. now. So it's, there's there's success stories and everything. Yeah, 100%. Right. So it's really up to you. It's 
yeah. a personal choice. We already answered this. Were you accepted into other schools? Yes. Mm-hmm. What made you choose the one you did? It just fit. It just, it just seemed felt right. right. It, it just felt good. The best place to be. How can I make time for a job and college? So you you worked. Michael's. You worked at Michael's Craft Store. And you were at Le, Ch- oh, Le Chateau. I, Le Chateau. <laughs> I, oh, so, oh, yeah. Where so were you? I, worked at, I worked at Baton Rouge right. Steakhouse. But then I got a job at Zara and just showed up oh, on yeah. my first day. I still have the picture. It was on our Blackberries. This is how oh old this God. was. Oh, my God. She showed up that. at the mall with her our friend at the time. Yeah. And you were like, oh, are you ready for your first day? And I was, like, in the, like, little <laughs> uniform I had. And we took a picture. And, yeah, I oh, worked at Zara God. in uh, Mississauga. And... Um, I hated that job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, customer retail service. You, If anyone works in retail, you know. It's it's bad. Yeah, you worked at Michael's too. Retail was not... <laughs> The best. I'm sure you had some amazing customer. You would you would vent to me and be like, "This woman returned like a bunch of stuff." Yeah, it yeah, it was awful. Well, that's why I had so many story times on YouTube because every customer was like a new story time. So oh. just, I literally got yelled at at Zara by an old lady because she didn't like the design on one of the little boys like items. I worked in kids on top like, of that. I didn't make this. Yeah, like, I know. Do you mean? And like <laughs> since I worked in kids, it would just be kids having meltdowns or like throwing oh, all no. the clothes on the ground. I'm like, no. I just want to die. <laughs> but um, yeah, on topic of work and college, it really depends on the workload and how much you can take on. Mm-hmm. Some people kind of don't have the option. Like some people might be international students or maybe just slow income and they need to figure out how to make money while in college. That's another question where it's kind of based on your lifestyle. Like, do you absolutely need to be working if yes, then unfortunately that's what you have to do. But if it's too stressful for you and you can't handle the workload of your tuition in school, then maybe it's not the right outlet yeah. at the moment. Don't drain yourself. Yeah. Like you could tell the people who were doing school and then job, job, job all oh, night yeah. long, oh, yeah. didn't sleep. You yeah. can tell they were exhausted. Yeah. I mean, I know with mine, I changed my work schedule to end of the week and on weekends, you know? I and didn't even do then, it that was probably hard for you because you had tasks to do. You had projects. Well, I quit like I don't know two yeah. years after I. We got there. we both quit our yeah. like, part time jobs because like <laughs> the, the projects were too much. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we quit the jobs because they they didn't deserve us one no. and two. We needed to graduate because yeah. our parents put a lot of money into the tuition. Yeah. Find a happy medium. You know, yeah. don't exhaust yourself. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to some mental health chats. So we're going to get a bit more serious right now. I know you and I both have a history with mental health. I don't know how much you're comfortable sharing. Yeah. Um, should we put a trigger warning since it's Probably. mental Probably. We're talking about like depression, anxiety, dark thoughts, all everything to do with mental health, right? Yes. Anything else? Uh, Probably suicide and self-harm. So anything yeah. related to mental health, just right. a trigger warning in advance. I think it's an important topic to talk about because I feel like there's still somewhat of a stigma. It's not as bad now, but going back like 10 plus years when we were in school, I feel like there wasn't a lot of talk on mental health compared to today. Yeah, Yeah, people are way more open now, which is nice. Yeah. Because you can relate more to people. And Do you want to start or should I start on that? You're... Okay. Go ahead. (laughs) Um, Well, Jess and I also like somehow connected on a deeper level because we were both experiencing depression and anxiety Mm -hmm. when we were in school. Personally, college was the lowest but the happiest times of my life somehow. Like first year, I could not handle the workload, which in retrospect, I should have probably talked to a professor about to say, hey, mentally, this is too much for me. And it got to a point where I was sleeping like 45 minutes a night and then I had to go catch the bus. And lack of sleep caused my brain to short circuit. It can trigger episodes. Um, Please get your sleep. If you're in yeah. college or in general, get your sleep. Mm-hmm. I don't care how important the project is. You got to get an extension from the professor because you will kill your mental health. I remember I was doing a project and I snapped and I cried and I was never the same after that. So I reached out to my family and my friends and I was like, listen, something's not OK with me. And I spoke to my doctor and that was very hard to say because I was like, this is still a stigma in today's society where you can't talk about mental health. Yeah. And I ended up getting on antidepressants, which I am still on to this day. And if I didn't talk to people, I don't think I'd be here, which sounds really dark. But college was so stressful that it caused me to spiral. And you yeah. and I kind of supported each other. Oh, in yeah, that for sure. Big time. And. I feel like other people had struggles too with it, but they just weren't vocal. But you and I were always 
like trying to see if we were both okay. Yeah, we definitely got each other through it. And yeah. it's, it's so important to have a support system and to have people you trust to talk about your thoughts so you 100%. don't feel so alone and yeah. isolated, right? Because yeah. that makes it worse. Talk to somebody. If there's somebody you can confide in, like your best friend, a teacher, your mom or dad, anyone that makes you feel safe, talk to them about it. Yeah, or a therapist. If you don't want to tell someone that you're close to because you're embarrassed, which you should never be, then definitely a therapist is good. We've both both been to therapy before. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's so essential for your mental health. It's so helpful. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, my whole life I've struggled mainly with anxiety. I Mm -hmm. think depression came later um, when I was in my teens and like 20s. Yeah. Um, but anxiety has always plagued me in different ways, like social anxiety mostly, but um, just generally like panic attacks all the time. I was on medication for 10 years. You had heart palpitations. Yeah. I don't know if that was from the anxiety, but I feel like the anxiety probably worsened it. It worsened it. Yeah. yeah. And my palpitations are definitely medical, but my yeah anxiety it makes it heart. worse. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, you and I have both struggled for a very long time and it's just good that we I'm just thinking about your like music that you would listen well you still <laughs> listen to the same music but I'm like we're both depressed and we're listening oh my to God. You, like Ty brought that up last week he's like you listen to like funeral music you and still like, do yes I love so like Boney Bear and stuff like I love you listening st- to she sad still music. loved the music back then oh yeah yeah, yeah I don't I love sad just, songs yeah and I was like I don't know if this is helping the depression but if it makes you feel good then. but isn't that crazy though like I gravitate to sad things and it's actually like comforting I'm the opposite you there's that song happy because I'm oh, yeah. happy okay that was the only thing getting me through oh like one period of, like that it, made me want to throw up I that know song. people hated that song but I was like so whatever suicidal and I'm like whatever word yeah it was bad um but yeah I'm the type of person that needs to listen to dance songs I need to I need to hype myself up I need to feel happy if I listen to sad music that's when I cry but I relate to the sad music so I'm like oh like we're all good like it's it's comforting because I relate to it and sometimes you know on TikTok when you get to those like sad quotes with the sad music I love that shit really like I just it makes me reflect but I'm not like (laughs) oh Yeah, that just shows you that other people are going through it, too. I know. Yeah, I like relatable stuff like that, even if it's sad. (laughs) That's okay. No, yeah, that's fine. If if you're comfortable with it, then do what you got to do. Yeah, Yeah. you guys sent in some questions relating to mental health. So we'll obviously try our best. We're not doctors. We're not therapists. Um, So if you're struggling, like we said, definitely don't just take our word for it. Speak to a medical professional. For sure. Yeah. Okay, how do you deal with academic anxiety? So, I mean, we were kind of just talking about that with workloads and Yeah, college. definitely sleep. Uh, prioritize your health. And just know that grades are not the end-all be-all of your life. Your life matters. And if you need time to unwind, do it if possible. You got to put yourself first. Like, yeah. even though college or high school or school might feel like it is the like epitome of your life like there's there's more to life so yeah. just put your health first or else you will end up sick and teachers are more understanding than you think i mean obviously it depends on the person but usually if you open up to them and you're like hey i'm struggling i can't take this workload can i have an extension they would understand usually yeah. they'll understand and there's also like counselors on site usually yeah. at campuses so if you need the resources they're there too yeah people are willing to listen and help you and yeah. yeah, cater to you. You can get through this. Yes. Yeah. So this question is a tough one because I deal with this. How do you deal with social anxiety? Not well. Oh, social anxiety? <laughs> you got to kind of fake it to make it. I, well, yeah, okay. that's what most people when say. When we were in college, Jesse's mom would always be like, go out to the clubs. Yeah. And you and I would be like, no, let's stay home and eat pizza. And yeah, like yeah. social anxiety is a little hard. You literally have to push yourself. Like yeah. when I first realized this is what I was dealing with, I was like, okay, well, I don't have to push myself. I can stay home. Mm-hmm. I can say no to events, but then I'm actually isolating myself and, and making it worse. FOMO too. Cause you're yeah, like, oh, exactly. I, I wish I could be there, but I just can't do yeah. it. But when I push myself and honestly, like becoming a YouTuber and having meet and greets and shows and like having- That must be hard. It was very hard at first. It still is. But like, I almost like, I don't know, was able to face my fears a little bit doing That's that. Good. You, you make know? it until you make it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that yeah. sounds so bad. But like, it's in a way, true, you do yeah. have to push yourself, yeah. like create your own boundaries and then little by little expand them when you're ready. And then you'll get there. Just even know, if. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, even if you are faking it till you're making it. Well, like, I was going to say, if you know what your social battery is at mm-hmm. and you know you're at your like 
wits end. Listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. Listen to your body. If you're like, I don't feel comfortable. Even, yeah, trust your gut. If you don't feel comfortable at that very moment being somewhere, go. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Just know your limit. I also, like, give myself rewards. So, like, if I have to go to, like, an event or something, I'll be like, okay, what can I do later on that I'll be excited for? Whether that's, like, me and Ty going to a movie. Oh, yeah. Or, like him taking me to dinner or like me planning to read the rest of the night i'll go to the event and be like but later even though i hate this now yeah (laughs) yeah something to decompress absolutely yeah exactly and it also helps like talking to your close friends and saying like hey i have social anxiety so if i ever need to like step outside or leave earlier than normal like then they'll know and they won't think you're leaving because you don't enjoy them they'll actually understand well real friends and real like people who actually care will be like yeah I totally get it exactly yeah, absolutely yeah and also like surrounding yourself with people who are kind of like you maybe if you're quieter you have quieter friends or whatever well, you that's know? why I loved your parties because it was just people that we all knew it was just a safe space of people that you had fun with yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's good so yeah definitely set your boundaries but then you know challenge yourself to break them a little bit whenever you can once in a while and then you feel proud Only of yourself when you're comfortable exactly yeah exactly what are some tips that have helped you cope with anxiety and depression i've got one for anxiety that i learned from a therapist okay it's called the five four three two one technique okay so if you're ever in a moment where you're really anxious and like you can't ground yourself you have to think of your senses so you would have to name five things that you can see in this present moment right now okay you list them out then there's four things that i believe you can touch okay and then three things you can hear two things you can smell and one thing you can taste okay yeah so if you search the five four three two one grounding technique it kind of brings you back into a neutral state instead okay i love that yeah definitely research it i learned it from a therapist and whenever i'm really anxious my fiance will be like, okay, let's do the technique. What are five things that you see? So then you just, you kind of get out of the anxiety and you kind of really ground yourself and you really think about your senses. Yeah. So it's it's a good technique. I wonder if that kind of helps with um, disassociating too. Because yes. I feel like sometimes when I'm anxious, I, I feel like I'm in a movie and I'm like, yeah. am I even in this room right now? So yeah. like maybe that would help it helps that you too. Ground, yeah, it grounds yeah. you. Yeah. That's a good technique. I wanted to share that with everyone because yeah, by the end of it, you're like, okay, I'm good. It's yeah. not bad. Yeah, for me, like books... I love books and I feel like whenever I'm anxious or sad or depressed like jumping into another world I know it sounds like silly but like I just you kind of like leave your current situation and you can focus on other characters problems and uh, you know what I mean like screw my problem yeah well I mean everyone has an outlet like you read some people watch reality tv some people play video games some people play sports it's fine any hobby and like you don't have to feel bad about putting yourself first and like doing something Mm -hmm. like that because some people are like well if I sit and read for five hours I feel like I'm not productive you like I could be like cleaning or something but it's like set time aside for doing that another time yeah. right like yeah i'm one of those people i'll like overwork myself and i'm like i don't deserve to sit yeah. down it's so easy to do that but yeah. you have to put yourself first and be like no i have to decompress read a book just take time for yourself exactly yeah the cleaning can wait the dirty laundry can wait yeah your mental health that's priority i may read too many books no a hundred a year oh yeah but- <laughs> Jess, I I can't. I don't know if I have ADHD, but I struggle to read one sentence, and I have a million books too that look really pretty. Audiobooks are good. Yeah, oh, I that, love audiobooks. You probably like podcasts. You love just listen. It. Yeah, I have a million books, but I can't read them. I struggle. I have some really good ones too, but yeah, it takes a while to get used to. At first, I was like, oh my gosh, I read a page, and I'd be like, that's it for today. But now I'm just yeah, but it's it okay. Flows. You know what? Whatever is natural. Has anything positive come from having mental health struggles? That's a hard one to answer. I feel like I wouldn't be the same person. It taught me to be more mature and more empathetic of other people's struggles. Because if you didn't go through it, you wouldn't know. Like, if someone says, hey, I'm feeling depressed, you know exactly what they're going through. So that's how I see that question. It's you begin to empathize and grow and realize that you're not the only person with struggles. That's true. Like, I've had some friends who I'm not really friends with anymore who Mm -hmm. they'd be like, what do you mean you're depressed like you just feel sad sometimes like and people don't get it yeah right they don't understand if you cancel plans because you're not well like unless they've been through it exactly exactly they won't understand that's true so empathy it helps with personal growth Mm -hmm. and it's just a part of who i am i mean obviously i don't love having 
depression no. and anxiety. Oh my god, it's not like you woke up one day and you're like, I just want to be Yeah, well, have depressed. you seen that TikTok, like, clip of that girl who was like, I love my mental health oh, or yeah. whatever. I'm like, I don't love it. No, Let's be no. Real no one there. does. No yeah. one wakes up and they're like, I want that anxiety. <laughs> Give it to me. No, but, yeah. like, I understand it better, you know? Yeah, and, like, to be honest, when I was dealing with clinical depression in um, college, I told myself that failure was not an option. Like, yeah. depression was not going to conquer me. Yeah. It, I was not going to allow that. Like, I woke up, trigger warning, I woke up suicidal some days. And I was like, no, we're not, this this demon is not going to take me over. Yeah. You I'm realize more than it. you're stronger. You are so much, you come out so much stronger, yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good spin on it. Do you have seasonal depression? Yes. If, I don't. If Oh, yeah, that's right. You love, I love the rain snow. and snow. I'm cold. You're very interesting. The mu yeah, I could just picture the music and the rain. Oh, that's that's comforting to yeah, you. Yeah, and you like the positive things to help you. Yeah, so the I, I like I'll listen to disclosure and like really hype up music, and I love like the sun. The sun. I love. We're opposites in that. Like yeah. I would love to like heat up like on a beach. I love it. I know that would be horrific no, for you. I need the sun. It was a sunny day today, and I was bummed. Really? <laughs> we, we drove in and I was like, this is the best. It's such a beautiful day. We're I was like, oh, I wish it was gloomy. My mom calls me sometimes and she's like, I'm going insane. She's like, it's been gloomy like the last three weeks. She's like, I can't. I, was I like, love yeah. that it gets dark early because then you can yes. just relax oh. and I go read and I'm like, oh, there's no annoying sun out right now. Like, it's but just so chill. Do you like the rain because you're like, oh, no one's going to bother me? I yes. Yes, and I like get especially that. like in snowstorms, I don't You're have like, to go oh, anywhere. No oh, yeah, like the weather's you have bad. That event. Sorry, I can't go. <laughs> like my my car stuck. Sorry about that. Exactly, it's a yeah. great excuse. Not that you should do that, but no. I'm just well, being actually, real. that doesn't really help with the social anxiety because <laughs> oh, you're like, don't do yes, that. yes. <laughs> Here's an excuse don't, not to go out. Don't use storms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I actually don't like driving in storms. Yeah. Like, I even told you, I'm like, if it's storming, we're not doing this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then another thing in college is you were so petrified to, like, get gas. Yeah. One time, like, the, uh, her car was low on gas and she called up her dad and was like, I, I don't know what to do. I was do. like, how do I do yeah, it? Yeah. What What do I press? Yeah. And it's your terrifying. dad's like, oh, just press 87. <laughs> Open up the 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 nudge, pr put it in, pay. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, you, you were having you a panic attack. I yeah. had gas anxiety. Yeah. Oh yeah, gas and car it's anxiety. Awful. <laughs> Last question: What is your opinion on taking medication to assist with mental health? So I don't know if you're on medication. Not currently. Not currently. I was for ten years. Yeah. So I've been on medication, like different medications for anti, like yeah, antidepressants. Right now. Like, right now. Okay. But I am weaning off. Um. I'm going through a struggle right now where I'm like, do I need to be taking antidepressants for the rest of my life because college was bad? Right. And like, I've gone through periods where like doctors, my family doctor has just been like, listen, just like a broken bone, sometimes people need to take medication for their mental health. So I'm going through a struggle where I'm like trying to wean off it to see if I'll be okay and mm -hmm. see if I can, if like, I just, I don't want to be dependent on something for my, the rest of my life. But yes, I do recommend getting on medication if that's what your family doctor recommends. Right. And if it doesn't work out, then maybe there's a way they can switch it or wean you off it. I know some people are against it. I'm for it because it personally saved my life mm -hmm. at one point. I don't know if there's anything that you can add to that, but I'm definitely for it if it will help you. Um, just obviously make sure you're not going cold turkey. And I was just, just about to say that. Yeah. You've got to wean off of it. Yeah. Follow your doctor's orders. Do not do it on your own or switch medication without you know, consent or any of that. No, I agree. Um, so I was on it for 10 years and then I weaned off as well. Mm -hmm. And a part of me, like, although I'm functioning without it, sometimes I think like I would probably be better with, really? with taking it still. Like sometimes I regret going off of it and I can still go back at any time, obviously. Yeah. It's not like you have to like never go back on it. So if you struggle again, you can always. Yeah. And just know that like, if like your doctor gives you medication and you find it's not working, do you let can them switch. know. You can switch. Yeah. When we first started college, I was on medication that literally knocked me out for like hours. That's what scares me though. Like some people have such bad reactions oh, to yeah. some meds and it, I hear stories and I'm like, oh my gosh, I yeah. don't know if I want to do that. Yeah. Not to scare you because no. you, there are ones that work. Like you've had one that's worked I've been for on you. the same one for like, yeah, 10 years exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. So there's going to be works. the right one for yeah. you. And like even the first one that I was on, I felt like a zombie. Like because it stripped my emotions. I've heard Yeah. That. So you're not happy. You're not sad. You're just a robot. And yeah. I hated it. So yeah, you just, if you feel like it's right for you, talk to your doctor and they'll see if it's worth it but i do recommend it yeah yeah me too it's yeah. personal for everyone yeah. make your own choices do your research 
Absolutely. So thanks for sending in all of these questions. That is everything we have to talk about today. Wow. I cannot believe it's ending right now. This yeah. has been fun. I know. It was great. Yeah, we I were nervous. It. We were both nervous. I, okay, can I tell? I had a dream about this freaking podcast. I did too. Really? Last night, actually. I had one a few days ago, and I yeah. was like imagining this huge crowd of people, and you're like, <laughs> you're like, Elena, we have to run and like, like, like high give five, it, high five everyone, like it's Oprah or something, or Ellen. Oh my God, we have like, a live you know, audience. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is terrifying, but it's it's fine. <laughs> this is good. We covered a lot of good topics, yeah, and yeah, I it was really, it. really good. Prioritize your mental health and your physical health and prioritize yes. yourself yeah. 100% yes. always you first yes um, but yeah you are welcome back anytime you like well hopefully the audience likes me and if they I'm do sure I they would will. love to come hopefully back well. yeah yeah and I think next week they'll be excited for the next um, the next guest. guest we won't spill who it is just we won't. yet but you know him and you love him Mandy we miss you yes and we hope everything's good She's yeah. all good. She's healthy coming back mid-February. So you'll see her very soon. Awesome. But yeah, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And I will see you in the next podcast. Awesome. Bye. Bye, guys.